Welcome back to Racing Across America on Thursday morning. That means a visit from Ron Nicoletti at Gulfstream Park. Good morning, Ron. Good morning, Seth. How are you doing today? Very good. We always like to touch on the Rainbow Six, and I wanted to touch on the quirky story uh, that came up last Friday. National Handicapping Championship. One of the contestants was out there vying for the big prize <laughs> in the uh, annual contest in Las Vegas. And just over the course of the day, he's playing the races. And why not try the Rainbow Six as well? <laughs> he picks up $150,000. <laughs> I know. Isn't that a fantastic story? This thing is the greatest boat ever. I, I, never, uh, I never knew what to expect. We got, uh, they hit it that day. So we're back up to uh, just about shade under 60000 today. So it'll be over 100 for uh, our thing. And we have a lovely race card today. So it starts in race number six. You and I were talking about it last week. And I mentioned it. I was on... Uh, I, uh, Sunday mornings I'm on with Steve Bick in the morning and I, I uh, then go on his radio show on Wednesdays and on Wednesday we were talking about this story and I mentioned boy it seems like this race, this uh, bet has been hit more this year than last year when that big pot carried over right. and, and I wondered if maybe that wasn't good advertisement for this year and then I started to think I wonder if last year just wasn't a fluke because there were a few days last year where it was almost hit and right. didn't, and I wonder if that was just maybe a fluky aberration last year. Yeah, you know, because last year there were like three or four times where a guy yeah. got beat a nose, or you know, remember the one guy, I don't remember the exact race, where one horse was closing from like 50 lengths out, and who was the, the one to get, and the lead was the, the one who would win the pool, and this horse comes flying out and just gets him at the wire, and the guy had like an $8 ticket and he lost like $2 million or so, you know, I don't remember the exact <laughs> number, so. It was like kind of wild. This year they seem to be nailing it, you know, all summer long, too. And even when we were doing it, you know, in, in during the summertime with our summer program, they were hitting it, hitting, you know, gets up, so, you know, a couple hundred thousand, then they hit it. And, and, and Bick made the great point, maybe there's a silver lining here, in that it spreads the money out a little more, as opposed yeah. to one guy coming away with two million. Right. It, this spreads it around, and, and maybe as a betting prospect, it's a little bit of a better uh, proposition, right. you know, you know spread the, guy, the money, spread the yeah. wealth. The guy hit it last year, you know, they hit the big one last year, you know, was like a very wealthy guy and ended up passing away yeah. right after that. But he, he actually uh, he actually uh, said he broke even, you know, he hit the thing and he said, well, at least I broke even for the year. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> that's our whole lifetime and he's just breaking even for the year. Yeah, he was a big better. There was no, that was a fluky story. He got it the day before it was going to go to the mandatory. Right, yeah. Well, he, went, he only did it because he, he was busy on the Saturday. Yeah, that's, kid, yeah, that's right. He didn't even, it wasn't like he particularly liked the card. His kid was doing something the next day. And yeah. I, was on, I was on with our local Channel 10 down here, you know, for a TV show, getting ready to do it. I was watching the horse cross the wire, and I said to the, to the guy, you got to change your story now. <laughs> Although it was still a pretty good story if you're a news, uh, you know, a news organization. Oh, yeah, it was great. Yeah. We had everybody in town out here. Yeah, that was incredible. But again, it's, it's getting popped this year. It's funny. All right, let's uh, take a look at some of the action for this afternoon. Then I want to go back and get some opinions on last Saturday. But before we do it, we talked a little during the break. But give us an update on the weather. Yeah, well, it's beautiful down here. We're like in the, right now it's about 65, 69, 70 degrees, sunny skies. We've got a fast main track for turf of course. should be great today. All right. And uh, let's start things out taking a look in the eighth. Maiden special weight event for uh, Phillies and Mayors four and up. They're on the grass at seven and a half. And I took a look at the Gulfstream races today myself. I thought it was 372 was the direction I would go. You know, obviously, uh, two to one on the morning line, Castellano, Miss Leck, uh, just the one that's typically in the hunt. Uh, luck now, I thought might be a little bit interesting, and uh, seemed to uh, appreciate the stretch out last time. But there's a question mark with the turf today. First time starter kiss a vet, I just thought might be a little bit interesting with Warfront well, on top. She scratched. Oh, okay, all right. So, yeah, no, that I makes got... it interesting because that was one of those I wasn't quite sure what to do with that one. Right. So I'm left with three seven and, and the eight intrigued me a little bit, I suppose. Yeah, I went with seven three and I went with Luck now making her first start on the turf. Uh, she really responded well to the addition of Lasix last time. I was at second place, finished beating the land. That was a mile and six. It was a race move sloppy track and Miss Leck for all the reasons you just mentioned you know daughter of Giants Causeway uh, first thought she chased the, you know she ran pretty good in those races you know and Chad Brown has been just doing fantastic he had a horse yesterday you know I really couldn't make it um, my co-host Christina spotted the horse and looked good in the paddock but he looked at its debut performance you know just didn't look like he could win what did he do win because it's Chad Brown yeah so and uh, we're familiar with that up here at Saratoga <laughs> certainly all right, let's uh, take a look out at the eighth race or the ninth race uh, this afternoon. Optional claimer starter allowance, ten claiming side, eight uh, starter allowance side. They're going the one turn mile. I had a two nine and eight. JB's Unk uh, was it some good form when last seen? That was back in early December. So obviously 
fitness is maybe a little bit of a question, but it's George Navarro who's a pretty high percentage trainer. You have to figure that one will, will be primed and ready. And then Blings Express, another one that just seems to be in the hunt more often than not, and Charge, the number eight horse. You know, this one won a similar race last time out. Now, whenever these kind of horses uh, come back, I always feel like, yeah, why not? You know, why not right back at a 10 to 1? Rosario on board, that one's kind of interesting as well. So I went 2, 9, and 8. I went 2, 6, and 5 in there, and I went with J.B. Zonk, turning back to a mile, really likes a mile, 7 starts, 3 wins. One of his favorite racing surfaces, 5 starts, he had 3 wins, 2nd and a 3rd. You know, when he got... You know, he won the claiming crown iron horse here on December 6th, and you mentioned the trainer, George Navarro, Paco Lopez. This is a hard-knocking seven-year-old. Mike, I don't know if I'm going to... I like this horse a lap. I just don't know if I could single it in the Rainbow Six, and I threw uh, the six Palatine Hill, winner of 50% of his races at the distance, which I like, eight stars, four wins, and uh, a hard-knocking campaigner called uh, uh, Chillin' Dylan in there. So uh, we're, we're in agreement with the top horse, and then you see you spread, so you single, I don't know. Yeah, well, I, and the five and the six I had down in the fourth and the fifth spots, and, and I usually, I'll go about four deep in a race, but in this one, I thought it was hard to separate those two, so I have no argument there with either the five or the six. Right. All right, tenth race this afternoon, optional claimer, 25 tags, non-winners of one other than the condition, quick five on the turf, I had it seven, ten, and three, Moonwalker. I thought uh, moving into the Peter Walder barn off the claim was worth noting. He does pretty well first time out of his barn. Malbec, the number 10 horse, just seems to be one that's uh, moving forward and, and showing some nice improving numbers. And then Shadow Rock, who if you go two starts back, won a pretty similar race. Maybe just in a little little tougher last time. I don't know. But uh, two starts back, I think you know distance and class-wise was very similar and ran very well. So for me, it was 7, 10, and 3. Uh, yeah, I went, I went seven ten, and the only other horse I used different was the six, a, a man of many virtues. I, have, I think he's going to prove, uh, you know, should have the screws tightened today. He returned from Leo, he finished a fast closing fourth behind aforementioned Malbec and Moonwalker. But Brian Lynch, his horses look great and run great. He's got Julian Leperu in the saddle. And Malbec, just to mention those who put a third, he was 33 to 1 last time out. So you're not going to get those odds today. And, and those are always tough to, to pull the trigger again. It's like, yeah. You know, exactly. miss the wedding, you don't want to show up at the funeral kind yeah, of a situation. That's, yeah. that's, why, that's actually why I mentioned it. I never like betting yeah, those horses. No, I hear you. All right, let's get some opinions on uh, last weekend. We have a little replay of the stretch run of the uh, Holy Bull, and I've been talking to a number of people all week long about this because, of course, we're on the first steps of the Derby Trail, and you're always looking out to that first Saturday in May. And upstart on the comeback, the three-year-old debut, looked pretty good. The number eight horse in here, two-to-one second choice, the favorite, uh, the number one, Frosted, at 3-2, to two, uh, again, does run second. Bluegrass Singer runs third. The logicals are right in there, maybe juggled up a little bit. But, boy, this was impressive for Upstart, and I thought it was an okay effort for Frosted, too. But Rick Violet's horse, gee, what a nice debut for the Yeah, Upstart season. was really fantastic, and, you know, people down here, I heard a couple of people say after, right after, that, oh, there's my derby horse, you know, <laughs> so uh, yeah. uh, they were going. But, you know, Frosted, I thought, got a little bit of a goofy ride, as far as I'm concerned. I really didn't understand, you know, it just looked like he's, you know, I don't think he would ever beat Upstart. I just thought he could have rode, rode a little bit. He got bumped at the start. He angled out at the quarter pull. I just didn't think he, you know, I don't know if he could have beat him. I doubt it very much, but I, I'm expecting some upside from Frost. And Bluegrass Singer, what a hard-knocking campaigner. You know, I, I talked to the jock after the race, Javier Castellano, and he just said he went out, they did what they wanted to do, learn this horse. Got him out there, you know, slow fraction, set it up, and, you know, not a bad performance for Bluegrass Singer. And uh, I have to touch on Barbados. It's been noted over the past 24 hours or so. Maybe that explains why it was close. I mean, he got it done. It was to him. Uh, at the, uh, the long trip in the Hutchison. But as I say, he's going to go for a little surgery. They say it's not the career threatening, but that is notable. But it was a nice performance by Yeah, Barbados. nice performance. He had to really dig in. I thought he moved forward. He basically, I thought he was a sprint. I didn't know if he was ready for the yeah. classics or anything. But XY Jet ran a fantastic yeah. race, you know, so you can't take it away from him. But maybe that was the case for Barbados. I, I actually was really impressed because he had a fight all the way around the track, you know, to win it by a half lead. So uh, uh, Barbados, uh, maybe we'll see him, uh, you know, in the, you'll see him up there in the spring and summer. And I got to get an opinion before we move on on the uh, maiden special on Saturday, uh, Kozan. I got to get a you know a, a bird's eye view opinion of this horse. First time out for uh, 
Todd Pletcher and a horse that attracted a lot of money as a youngster, Cozy, and gets it done in the career debut. Yeah, I mean, that was very impressive. You know, you didn't know what to expect break, breaking from that post and everything like that, but, uh, uh, you know, Todd Pletcher, this could be a good one. You've got to mark yeah. this one down, you know, and the great breeding on the on the horse and everything like that. You know, and it drew off impressively, won that race by, I think, almost four lengths, right? Yeah. So that was pretty nice. Absolutely. And uh, finally, uh, Ron wanted to talk about uh, Saturday because stakes race on Saturday, interesting. A, Name for the Chief, it's the H. Allen Jerkins, but more importantly, perhaps, I love these, these marathon races, two miles on the turf. Yeah, two miles on the turf, they were joking because, you know, Allen Jerkins hated the turf, but he had a, his <laughs> first win ever was a two mile race, so they had to do it, and, and you know, we, I was surprised, when the entries popped out, there were 12 entries in the race, so, uh, you know, I, I went with ref Reflecting and Unitarian, and, and the Sneaky, I think, is the one horse in the inside Turkish, who's coming in from Canada, Riding all these, running in all these marathon races on the on the poly track. Yeah, I think it's a lot of fun, and I, I'm looking forward to it. I, I, as I say, I love those marathon events. Uh, Ron, as always, we appreciate the visit. Good luck this afternoon out on the weekend you, as well, and we'll talk to you next week. Thank you. Bye.